1620, while the Mayflower was in Provincetown, 18 of its men sailed in a small shallop, searching for a place to live. They came to present-day East Ham, where they were met by a group of Nosset. After a brief but violent encounter, the English left towards today's Plymouth. In 2020, we remember this first encounter. We explore its meanings for today and tomorrow. Good evening. Welcome to our Sunset Series. We're privileged tonight to be joined by Alicia Vallely, who is uh, a student doing a special project here in town. Uh, what are you studying, Alicia, and where are you studying? Yes, uh, I am an archaeology student at Boston University, and I'm pursuing my master's degree. Okay. And tell us about the project you're doing uh, here in town, please. Uh, I am doing a ground penetrating radar survey of Cove Cemetery. So I'm looking at the spatial relationships between marked and unmarked graves, and I'm hoping to see if I can find the meeting house or the church that was on the site. A ground penetrating radar. Is this a new technology? Has this been around for a while? Or what? what are you going to show us a picture of this eventually? Uh, yes, I okay. do have a picture of the equipment I used. Okay. Um, ground penetrating radar has been around for a very long time, but it hasn't really been used very much in archaeology. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping with this project I can open the door to unreachable areas like cemeteries where traditional excavation methods aren't really allowed or um, available. Mm -hmm. So a lot of projects were done in the 80s and 90s, but then usage kind of dropped off. But with the equipment I have now, I get a much clearer picture than the equipment they used then. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, I understand that there was a, a project here in, in East Ham some years ago. Uh, so show us the, uh, we're going to look at, uh, here at the image. Tell us about this equipment. What are we looking at in the first image? Sure. So in the first image, uh, you'll see in the center, in the case, is my control unit. Um, that is basically the brains of the entire operation. It speaks to the antenna, which is that orange box right there. Mm -hmm. And it tells it, what it is, the antenna doesn't really know what frequency it is, but I put in the control unit what it is. So I'm using a 400 megahertz frequency antenna, which gets me to a penetration of about six to nine feet with pretty good focus. Um, you'll see behind the orange box is a tire. That is called an encoder wheel. And what it does is a certain number of clicks triggers a certain number of scans. Um, You'll also see uh, some tapes and some cones. Mm -hmm. The tapes are used to lay out a perfect grid. Um, mm -hmm. In the case of Cove, I did several grids that were about 20 meters long, a few shorter, a few longer. Um, and then you'll see some cones, which help me keep a perfectly straight line. Mm -hmm. And then notes, which you can't have a good field season without notes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And understand we have a video or two here, too? Yes. Um, there's a video uh, of me running the equipment, mm -hmm. which is basically just me pulling a little box behind me, and then a close-up of what the scan actually produced. So I'm just going to drag the antenna in a perfectly straight line. Pull it until the tape ends. Which matches up to the center of the light. And you press stop to tell it to stop recording. And that is what's underground. See anything cool? Um, it looks like there's a possible grave right around here. You can see there's a break in the soil and then a little lump. So what that are the is something. Up top? These lumps up here are roots that we've hit at about a 90 degree angle. As the antenna passes over it, 
it hits it starting here and it thinks it's a lot lower down than it is because it records how long it takes for the signal to return. So the center of the root is up here and it is along here. But radar is dumb and thinks that because it took longer to come back instead of being at this angle, it's just directly below it. All right, a close-up of the scan. So what do we, uh, I, I, I know very little, and the viewers may know very little about uh, the images you're looking at underground. Do we see actual bodies? Do we see skeletons? Or what, what do we see when we're looking Unfortunately, at Unfortunately, no. I wish we saw skeletons. It would make my job a lot easier. But what you'll see is um, like a mathematical shape called a hyperbola, which is basically just an upside down U. And that happens when the radar passes over uh, a certain object. We call it a discrete target. So in a burial situation, you would have the radar pass over it and then it would create the hyperbola. So that's not actually the true shape of what's underground. It's just what the radar interprets. So then it's on, uh, it's on the scientist to interpret the weird funky shapes and then the, the differences in the soil to determine when there's something down there of interest. Did you have a lot of those moments in the days at, at Cove Cemetery? I did, yes. It was very exciting. Um, walking past marked graves and realizing, uh-oh, they're about three feet to the left of where they should be. And then walking past something just completely unmarked and then just being like, there is a very clear burial just right under our feet right now. But no above ground marker for, for the, some of them. Right, yeah. right, yes. Fascinating. I had heard over the years that some of the bodies had been moved around. Uh, and so you're, you're saying two things I just heard. One is that some of the underground burials are not lined up with the uh, headstones or footstones. Correct. This, uh, the, yes. And uh, then there's other burials that are not marked above ground at all. Right. All right, that's fascinating. Now, are you going to, uh, I understand you're also going to do Bridge Road Cemetery, is that right? Yes, so that was the plan in my proposal. Unfortunately, I bit off a little more than I could chew. This was my first survey using the equipment, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that I have to go 25 centimeters at a time. Okay, so, so you may not, me, you, this may be the project right now. For now, yeah, yes. Yeah. I, with approval from my advisors, I, there's a possibility that I'll come back in the fall or next summer to do bridge and then compare the results. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, it's going to be limited to Cove. Uh, and of course, we, those, those of us who study the history of town appreciate that Cove Cemetery was uh, the folks who were buried there lived in the 1600s. There were some of the Mayflower uh, passengers, some of the original uh, people, who, English who came to live in Nauset in the middle of the 1600s. Those would be the people who are buried there up until uh, the uh, end of uh, Samuel Treat's pastorate uh, in the second decade of the 1700s. And only then would Bridge Cemetery open at a new meeting house. Uh, and so the burials there would be obviously a century later. Uh, so that there'd be different ways, Different. I would think there'd be it's two different fields of study in a way. It's two different historical periods is what I understand. Yes. I, I was hoping to compare the two to see how burial practices had changed over mm -hmm. the course of time. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I'm not sure I'll be able to do that over the course of this project. Those and other specialties, I'm involved in the history of art somewhat. And the different iconography of the headstones and how that evolved between the two cemeteries is a fascinating thing. So I imagine Absolutely. a lot of things involved in our different uh, fields of study we would have evolved between the two cemeteries. Yes. Uh, so uh, you chose to come to East Ham uh, because I understand you were here before, is that right? I was, yes. Um, last summer I worked on the archeological dig at the Doan home site mm -hmm. um, led by Dr. John, John Chenoweth. And the first day of the dig, he brought us to the cemetery at Cove, and he said, all right, take a look, see what you can find. And I just, it was very fascinating for me to see everything that was there, and I really would like to know more. So here I am, a year later. Wonderful. So you, I understand you'll be evaluating, analyzing the data that you're uncovering as part of your um, program of studies through the course of the next academic year. Is that yes. so that your report to the town would come uh, with, with about a year from now, is that? that Most likely in May. Mm -hmm. 
I'll pre- be preparing a thesis defense. But before then, I'll have all of my results written up, which I will provide to the town, mm-hmm. and uh, they can distribute it however. Wonderful. Well, I thank you very much. And people have to appreciate that archaeologists have to involve first in what are they actually seeing, and then analysis and interpretation are are other steps. And, it, and we thank you for getting us to a f- firm foundation on what we're actually uh, can see down below there. Thank you very much for joining with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. My name is Joanna Hollick. Thank you for your support of the Sunset Series and East Ham 400. If you're interested in supporting East Ham 400 efforts by purchasing commemorative items, we do have several items for sale on our website, easthamp400.org. We are selling gold foil first encounter ornaments, t-shirts with the East Ham 400 logo, and montages made by a local artist. The ornaments feature an image of the shallop and come with a special description card. The t-shirts are available in light blue, navy, and ash gray, and in sizes adult small through 3XL. The montage depicts watercolor images of important historic and well-known landmarks around the town of East Ham. Each of these items are $20. Thank you.